Welcome back. Again, we are talking about ratios. In this lesson, we are going to take to talk about ratio tables. And our objective is use ratio tables to represent and solve problems involving equivalent fractions. First, what is the meaning of equivalent ratios? Equivalent ratios express the same relationship between quantities. Look at the drawing here we have three circles with the same size each each one is divided into two halves like this the first one is divided into two parts only one of them is shaded so the ratio is one to two so we will write here one over two as a fraction the other circle is also shaded half of it but the, in this case it is shaded two parts out of the four parts is divided into four parts as you see here and only two parts are shaded so this means that it's two out of four which is shaded the last one here is also half of it is shaded but in this case we divided the circle into eight small parts and from the eight four of them are shaded so the shaded parts are four out of eight so this means that 1 over 2 is the same or equal to 2 over 4, which is equal to 4 over 8. This means that these three ratios or three fractions are all equivalent and equivalent means equal. How do we get equivalent fractions from each other or equivalent ratios from each other? If you have here 1 over 2, how do I get here? by multiplying by 2. So I multiplied 1 times 2, I got 2. In ratios, what I do in the numerator, I should do also in the denominator. So I multiply down also by 2, so I'll get 4. And to get the other one, I will also multiply up by 2 and down by 2 to get 4 over 8. So equivalent ratios can, can be done by multiplying or dividing the numerator and denominator of the ratio by the same number. Examples To make yellow icing, you mix 6 drops of yellow food coloring with 1 cup of white icing. So we have 6 drops of yellow food coloring and we have 1 cup of white icing. So we will draw here a table like this and we will put the two quantities which I am comparing by or the ratio between them which is drops of yellow icing and cups of icing then we will put these this ratio which is six drops six for yellow icing uh, sorry yellow drops and one cup let's continue reading the problem how much yellow food coloring should you mix with five cups of white icing to get the same shade so we have five cups of white icing so i put here five as you see here and this will be unknown how do i do this this is what he's asking for he's asking for how much yellow food icing for food coloring should you cups of white icing so we use a ratio table like this and we ask ourselves we have cups one cup of icing it became five this is by multiplying by 5. So because we multiplied down by 5 to get this 5, I should multiply up also by 5 to get 30. So 6 times 5 is 30 drops of yellow coloring. So we add 30 drops of yellow food coloring to 5 cups of icing. <clears throat> Let's take another example. In a recent year, Joey Chestnut won a hot dog eating contest by eating nearly 66 hot dogs in 12 minutes. So we have numbers, number of hot dogs to number of minutes. So we put here hot dogs and we here have minutes or time. The ratio is 66 hot dogs to 12 minutes. If he ate at a constant rate, determine hot dogs he ate every 2 minutes. So the question is, if we have the two minutes, so what is the rate? This is unknown, still unknown, okay? So if he ate in two minutes, how many hot dogs should he eat? Look here, to go from 66, or sorry, to go from 12 to 2, I will do it in two steps. I can, I can divide 
first by 2 down and divide up by 2 so 12 divided by 2 is 6 and 6 6 divided by 2 is 33 after that to go from 6 to 2 we divide by 3 so also we divide 33 by 3 and we will get the 11 this is the answer so we divide each quantity by one or more common factors until you reach a quantity of two minutes we can do it also in one step like this if we not we want to go from 12 to 2 we will just divide in one step by 6 so 12 divided 6 equal 2 and at the same time up here it should be divided by the same number 6 so 6 6 divided 6 equal 11 so chestnut ate about 11 hot dogs every two minutes let's do this problems if we can understand a patient receives one liter of lv fluids every eight hours so we have number of liters to the hours so we have lv fluid in liters to time in hours and the ratio is one liter to eight hours at that rate find how many hours it will take to receive four liters of lv fluids so if we have four liters let's think about this to go from one to four we should multiply by what? yes we should multiply and we multiply it all by four so what we do up we should do it also down here so multiply eight by four as well and this will be 32 so it should take 32 hours to take four liters of lv fluids number b to make a cranberry jam you need 12 cups of sugar for every 16 cups of cranberries so we have number of cups of sugar to number of cups of cranberries so we put here in our table sugar in cups and cranberries in cups we have the ratio 12 to 16 find the amount of sugar needed for four cups of cranberry so we have here four so to go from 16 to 4 we can divide directly by 4 so 16 divided 4 equal 4 and also directly we can divide 12 by 4 we will get three cups of sugar or we can do it in two steps by dividing 12 by 2 and 16 by 2 so 12 di divided by 2 is 6 and 16 divided 2 is 8 and then we divide again by 2 to get 4 and divide here by 2 so you can do it either in one step or in two steps multiplying or dividing two related quantities by the same number is called scaling so what we were doing here is called scaling but sometimes you may need to scale back and then scale forward to find an equivalent ratio let's take an, this example if I have a ratio like 2 over 7 and I want the ratio of 2 over 7 should be equal to 5 over what here so in this case I should scale I, I should do something in between because 2 cannot be 5 by a direct way I cannot multiply 2 by a number to get 5 directly uh, and of course I cannot divide 2 by a number to get 5 directly in this case I can divide 2 by 2 so I'll get 1 here I'm sorry let the 7 be, uh, be 6 for example okay so I will divide 2 divided 2 equal 1 and of course I should divide also 6 divided by 2 to get 3 now to get from 1 to 5 I will multiply by 5 so 1 times 5 equal 5 also the 3 should be multiplied by 5 so I'll get the unknown number which is 15 so again if I have a ratio like this and I want it to get to be a Another, or there is no direct relation between these two quantities the 2 and the 5 so I will make something in between them which is 1 over 3 by scaling 
backward so when we divide we scale back so I first here scaled back by dividing by 2 then I here multiply by 5 this is called scale forward let's take an example cans of corn are on sale at 10 for four dollars so we have 10 cans of cans so I have 10 cans for four dollars and I need to know if we have 15 corn so how many dollars will it cost do I have a direct relation between 10 to 15 so that I can divide or multiply by a number to get 15 from 10 of course not so in this case I should scale backward or forward then I scale backward or forward again so there is no whole number by which you can multiply 10 to get 15 so scale back to 5 so let's scale this to 5 so I will do it here 10 divided by 2 I'll get 5 and 4 divided by 2 of course I'll get 2 so scaling backward first I divided up and down by 2 then I scale forward by multiplying by 3 so multiply 5 times 3 I'll get 15 this is what I have and the missing number will come from 2 times 3 is 6 so it costs six dollars to to get 15 cores let's take another last example Leo buys five DVDs for sixty dollars so we have DVDs and we have dollars so let me make my table first before I start solving like this I'll put here the number of DVDs and here the dollars okay and the ratio is 5 DVDs for $60 at this rate how much would he pay for 3 DVDs so how many DVDs 3 and of course this is the unknown here how many dollars will it cost Again, ask yourself, do you have a direct relation or a direct number that I can multiply or divide 5 to get 3 from 5? Of course not. So, in this way, I will use scaling backward, then scaling forward. So, to scale backward, I can divide both 6 and 5. What is the GCF or greatest common factor between them it is 5 so I will divide up and down by 5 5 divided 5 is equal to 1 and 60 divided 5 is equal to 12 now can you get 1 to be 3 yes of course I multiply I just multiply 1 by 3 and what I did up I should do it down so I multiply also 12 by 3 and the answer will be $36 for 3 DVDs. I hope you understand my lesson. Please subscribe and like it. And if you have any comment, I'll be glad to read it and I will answer it back. Thank you.